live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back inside the sands. We continue our coverage here, live coverage on theCUBE of AWS reInvent. 2019, we're in day three, and it has been wall to wall, a lot of fun here, Tuesday, Wednesday, now Thursday. Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls, and we're joined by Christian Romming, who is the founder and CEO of Etleap. And Christian, good morning to you. Good morning, thanks or for having me. Or good afternoon, you. if you're watching on the, uh, on the East Coast right now. Um, let's talk about Etleap a little bit. I know you, you're all about data, uh, but let's go ahead and introduce the company to those at home who might not be familiar with what your, your core focus is, the primary focus. Absolutely. So, Etleap is a managed ETL as a service company. ETL is extract, transform, and load. Basically about getting data from um, different uh, data sources, like different applications and databases, into a place uh, where it can be analyzed, typically a data warehouse or a data lake. So let's talk about the big picture then. I mean, because this has been all about data, right? I mean, accessing data, coming from the edge, coming from multiple sources, IOT, all this, right? You have this proliferation of data and applications that come with that. Um, what are you seeing then, big picture wise, in terms of what people are doing with their data, how they're trying to access their data, how they're trying to drive more value from it, and how you serve all those masters, if you will? So there are a few trends um, that we see these days. One is, uh, you know, an obvious one that data warehouses are moving to the cloud, right? So, you know, uh, companies used to have uh, data warehouses on premises, and now they're in the cloud. They're uh, cheaper and, um, um, and more scalable, right, with services like uh, Redshift and, and, and Snowflake in particular on AWS. Um, and then uh, another trend is that companies have a lot more applications than they used to. You know, in the, um, in the old days you would have maybe a, a few data uh, sorry, databases uh, on premises that you would integrate into your data warehouses. Nowadays you have, companies have uh, hundreds or even thousands of applications um, and that effectively become data silos Right, where um, uh, analysts are seeing value in that data and they want to, want to have access to it. So, I mean, ETL's obviously not going away. I mean, it's been here forever and it'll, it'll be here forever. The challenge with ETL has always been it's cumbersome, it's expensive, it's, and now we've, it, we have this new cloud era. Um, how are you guys changing ETL? Yeah, ETL is something that everybody uh, would like to see go away. Everybody would just <laughs> like not to do it. But they it just won't. want to get access to their data. <laughs> and, uh, and it should you know. be very unfortunate for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, so we started, uh, we started at Leap because we saw that ETL is not going away. In no. fact, with all, the, uh, all these applications and all these new needs that analysts have, it's actually becoming a bigger problem than it used to be. Um, and so uh, what we wanted to do was basically take take some of that pain out, right, so that companies can get to analyzing their data faster and with less engineering effort. Yeah, I mean, you hear this, you know, the, the, the typical story is the data scientists spend 80% of their time wrangling data, and it's, and it's true in any situation. So, um, are you trying to simplify uh, or cloudify ETL? Uh, uh, and, and if so, how are you doing that? So with the, with the growth in the number of data analysts and the number of data analytics projects that companies want to take on, the, the traditional model of having a few engineers that know how to basically make the data available for analysts, that, that model is essentially now broken. And so uh, just like you want to democratize uh, BI and democratize analytics, you essentially have to democratize e ETL as well, right? Basically that process of making the data ready for analysis. And, uh, and that is really what we're doing at Atleap. We're, we're opening up ETL to a much broader audience. So I'm interested in how, so I'm in pain. It's expensive, it's time consuming. Help me, Christian. How, how can you help me? Sir. Sure. <laughs> so, so first of all, we're, we're um, uh, Atleap specifically, we're 100% uh, AWS, so we're deeply focused on uh, Redshift uh, data warehouses and S3 and Glue data lakes. Uh, and you know, there's tremendous amount of innovation um, in those two sort of sets of technologies now. Um, Redshift made a bunch of very cool announcements here at AWS uh, reInvent this year. Um, and so what we do is we take the, uh, the infrastructure piece out, you know, so you can deploy Atleap as a hosted service uh, where we manage all the, the, the infrastructure for you, or you can deploy it within your VPC. Um, again, you know, in a much, much simplified way uh, compared to traditional ETL technologies. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, taking, uh, building pipelines, you know, building data pipelines used to be something that would take engineers 
six months to 18 months, something like that. But um, but now we, what we what we see is companies using Athlete, they're able to do it much faster, often um, often in hours or days. A couple questions there. So it's exclusively Redshift, is that right? Or other analytic databases? I mean, uh, so Adlib is 100% uh, AWS. We're deeply focused on, on integrating well with, with AWS technologies and services. Uh -huh. so, um, so on the data warehousing side, we support Redshift and Snowflake. Okay, great. So I was going to ask you if Snowflake was part of that. So, well, you saw Redshift kind of, I, I sort of tongue-in-cheek joke, they took a page out of Snowflake separating compute and storage. That's going to make customers very happy so, they can, happy so they can scale that independently. But there's a big trend going on. I wonder if you can address it. And, and you're, you were pointing out before that there's more data sources now because of the cloud. We were just having that conversation. And you're seeing uh, the data exchange, more data sources, things like Redshift and Snowflake, uh, machine intelligence, other tools like Databricks coming in, SageMaker, uh, SageMaker Studios making it simpler. So it's just going to keep going faster and faster and faster, which creates opportunities for you guys. So are you seeing that trend? It's almost like a new wave of compute and workload coming into the cloud. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting. Companies can now access um, a lot more data, more varied data, bigger volumes of data that they could before, and, um, um, and they want faster access to it, both in terms of the time that it takes to, you know, to, to byte zero, right? Like the time, the time that it takes to get to the first, uh, first analysis. Um, and, also, um, and also in terms of the, the, the data flow itself, right? They, they now want um, up to the second or up to the millisecond um, uh, essentially fresh data uh, in their dashboards and for interactive analysis. And, and what about the analytics side of this then? When we're talking about you know, warehousing, but, but also having access to it and doing something with it. Um, and how, what's that evolution looking like now in this new world? So lots of um, lots of new interesting technologies there too, um, um, you know, on the on the BI side, and uh, and our focus is on on integrating really well with the warehouses and lakes, so that those those BI tools can plug in and and um, um, and, and you know um, get access to the data straight away. Okay. All right. So architecturally, why are you uh, how are you solving the problem? Why are you able to simplify? I'm presuming it's all built in the cloud. That's I mean, that's kind of an obvious one. Uh, but I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit, because oftentimes when we talk to companies that, that have started, born in the cloud, John Furrier's been using this notion of cl you know, cloud native. Well, the meme that we've started is you take out the T in cloud native and it's cloud naive, right? So, you're cloud native. Now, what happens oftentimes with cloud native guys, it's, it's much simpler, faster, lower cost, agile, you know, cloud mentality but maybe some, sometimes it's not as functional as a company that's been around for 40 years. So you have to build that up. What's the state of ETL you know, in your situation? Can you maybe describe that a little bit? How is it that the architecture is different and how address functionality? Yeah, I mean, um, so a couple of things there. Uh, um, you, you mentioned Redshift earlier and how they now announced the separation of storage and compute. I think the same is, is true for ETL, right? We can, we can build on, um, on these great uh, services that AWS develops like S3 and, and uh, uh, database migration service and EC2, um, Elastic MapReduce, right? We can, we can take advantage of all these, all these cloud primitives and, um, um, and, and so the, the infrastructure becomes operationally uh, easier that way um, and, and less expensive and all, all those good things. You know, I wonder, Christian, if I can ask you something. I mean, you, were, you live in a complicated world. I mean, data's complicated and it's getting more complicated. We heard Andy Jassy on uh, Tuesday really um, give a message to the, to the enterprise. It wasn't really so much about the startups as it has previously been at, at, at AWS reInvent. I mean, certainly talking to developers, but he, he was messaging CEOs. He had two or three CEOs on stage. But what we're describing here with, with Redshift, and I threw in Databricks, AgeMaker, uh, Elastic MapReduce, uh, your tooling, uh, we just had a company on that does governance, and, and builders have to kind of cobble these things together. Do you see an opportunity to actually create solutions for the enterprise, or is that antithetical to the AWS cloud model? What, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. No, the, um, um, uh, th these cloud services are, are, are fantastic primitives, but, um, but enterprises clearly have a lot of, and, and we're, we're seeing a lot of that, right? We started out in, in venture back tech and, and, and got um, a, lot of, a lot of venture back tech companies up and running quickly, but now that we're sort of moving up market and, and, uh, and into the enterprise, we're seeing that they have 
uh, requirements that go way beyond uh, be beyond what what venture back tech uh, yeah. needs, right? In terms of security, governance, you know, in in ETL uh, specifically, right? That that manifests itself in terms of. Uh, not allowing data to flow out of, of the, the, the company's virtual private cloud, for example. That's something that's very important in enterprise and much less important in, in, uh, in, in venture back tech. Um, data lineage, right, that's another one. Understanding how data uh, makes it from you know, all those sources into the warehouse, what, ha what happens along the way, right? And in regulated industries in particular, that's very important. So. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, AWS's mindset is, we got engineers, we're going to throw engineers at the problem and solve it. Many enterprises look at it differently. We'll pay money to save time, you know, because we don't have the time, we don't have the resource. I, I feel like I, I'd like to see sort of uh, increasing solutions focus. Maybe it's the big SIs that provide that. Now, are you guys in the marketplace today? We are, yep. That's awesome. So, yep. how's, that, how's that going? Yeah, uh, um, you mean AWS marketplace? Yes, yes. yes. It, uh, yeah, it's it's um, um, that that's definitely one one channel that uh, where there's a lot of a lot of promise, I think, both yeah. um, for 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 enterprise companies specifically. I mean, you got to work it. Obviously, it doesn't sure. just the money just doesn't start rolling in. You sure. got to you got to market it yourselves and, and partner. But that definitely simplifies that um, th that model, right, of delivering delivering solutions to the enterprise for sure. So, so what's down the road for you then, uh, from from ETL Leaps perspectives here or Ed Leaps perspectives? Um, you've talked about the complexities and what's occurred, that you're not going away, ETL's here to stay, problems are getting bigger. Uh, what do you see the next you know, 12, 18, 24 months as far as where you want to focus or what you think your customers are going to need you to focus on? So the big challenge, right, is that um, um, bigger and bigger companies now are realizing that there is a ton of value in their data in all these applications, right? But in order to, in order to get value out of it, um, you, you have to put uh, engineering effort today into building and maintaining these data pipelines. And so, uh, so yeah, so our focus is on reducing that, re reducing those engineering requirements, um, right? So that both in terms of infrastructure, pipeline operation, pipeline setup, uh, and, and, and those kinds of things. So we're, uh, we believe that uh, a lot of that that's traditionally been done with specialized uh, engineering can be done with, with great software. So that's, that's what we're focused on building. Well, I love that you know, the company tagged the perfect data pipeline. I think of like the perfect summer, the guy catching the big wave out in Maui or someplace. Good luck on catching that perfect data pipeline. All right, yeah, I love what so you guys are doing. You're solving yeah. a real problem. So Thank you. congratulations. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the time. Good to meet you. Back with more, we are live at AWS reInvent 2019 and you are watching theCUBE.